Charles Manson is dead, but Newsweek has found a sinister new cult leader to replace him, President Donald Trump. What's the reasoning? According to Newsweek, Trump and Manson both use, quote, emotional language to establish a bond with followers. You know how it is. Uh, one day you're giving a speech on immigration, and the next day everybody's writing helter-skelter on the wall in blood. It's a simple two-step process. Joe Concha writes about media for The Hill, and he joins us. Joe, were you shocked to discover that Trump and Manson are the only two guys in history to have used emotional language to connect with followers? Well, the, the funny thing is, if you read the story, mm. The author, or at least the mm. psychoanalyst that they speak mm. to, concedes that he has no idea what Manson actually said to attract his followers. Right. <laughs> he just made assumptions that he yeah. knew and then made the connection back. And, and this is all about TDS, which yeah. is Trump Derangement Syndrome. Yeah. And this example, and we have two others here, actually is from the last two days. It's not like we're doing the best of no, from the no, year type no, of no. thing. So there, there clearly is no antidote. But I guess they're thinking, you know, Mussolini, Stalin just doesn't have that oomph anymore as far as right. analogies. And Hitler, we've hit our 100,000 quotas as yeah. far as comparing Trump to him. So let's go with somebody who was breathing within the last 72 hours that they could relate to in Charles Manson. Yeah, and those guys are like uh, wacky foreigners. Let's compare him to an all-American monster. Boom, That's there the... you go. But it isn't the reality, though, that... Uh... Manson had huge influence on the left. I mean, it was Bernadine Dawn, who's the wife of Bill Ayres, uh, Obama's mentor and patron, who said, uh, dig it. First they killed these pigs, then they ate dinner in the same room with them, then they even shoved a fork into the pig Tate's stomach. Wild. I mean, he's a hero to the left. He's got nothing to do with Trump or the right. I believe he wrote some songs while he was in prison, and then some mm. uh, musicians actually uh, performed them. Uh, yeah, for I'm, Manson. So yeah, he became a, a, a cult legend yeah, after that, brutally having seven people killed, including Sharon Tate, an actress. Yeah, that's right. I think I think the BBC actually tracked down something like seventy-five bands who play Charles Manson songs. This other story uh, you mentioned uh, from the New Yorker is about, quote, the sinister banality of American life yeah. emanating from Donald J. Trump. Uh, the exact quote is, uh, the attack on Rand Paul mm. by his neighbor reveals a sinister banality, as you said, of American life that these days is often emanating from Donald Trump. Mm. Now, if you read about this story, Rand Paul was attacked by a neighbor right. and reportedly for non-political reasons. Yeah, lawn clippings, supposedly, so or something knows? like that. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and a sitting senator is attacked at his home and gets a couple of ribs broken. Right. And again, it's the anger that's emanating from Donald Trump that, that actually possessed this person to do that. It's not just anger, though. It's banal anger. But, isn't right. It? Yeah, that, that's that's yeah. the trick. And here's the thing. When Steve Scalise was shot and all those Republican congressmen back back in the spring, and then it was fa it was discovered that he was a Bernie Sanders supporter, right. that's unfair to Bernie Sanders. How could you say, well, Bernie Sanders had this guy do that? And you can't do that with Trump. And the problem in this country now is we have to blame somebody from a political party every time a nut carries out something because we're a blame culture now, and it's a joke. But, th but this guy actually is a, a Democrat, so he whether it was over for the... It may be Democrats go bananas over lawn clipping. The other thing is that... Apparently Apparently, Trump, who is a climate denier, <laughs> that's the best one, I think. His own family were driven out of Europe by 19th century climate change. There it is. Uh, did Donald Trump's ancestors migrate to the United States uh, because of a change in climate? Apparently, 130 years ago, uh. Donald Trump's grandfather left Germany, just like Eddie Murphy right. in Coming to America, and went to Queens right. because he was trying to escape the climate change that was going on over there. And if you look at the weather in Queens and you compare it to where the Trumps uh, lived in Germany, it's basically the same. Yeah. <laughs> and it was basically great because we were coming out of the Little Ice Age and we had this gradual warming trend yeah. through the 19th century. There were a lot of problems with the in 19th century Germany. You got, you know, your revolutions of 1848 and whatnot. But the, uh, but the, the weather wasn't one of them. No, uh, obviously not. And here's the thing. If you had a diary entry from Fed Frederick Trump, who was Trump's mm -hmm. grandfather, and he said we had to get out of here because things were going bad with the crops or whatever, uh. then fine. Or if he did an interview with somebody. But there's no evidence whatsoever, again, to connect this back to Donald Trump. And the implication clearly is that the current president pulled out of the Paris Climate Accords, right. and now the, the planet is doomed, and he didn't realize that climate change actually affected his relatives 130 years ago. And boy, the irony of that, huh? And the jokes, and the jokes on him, because the tortured climate, the, the slow warming trend of the 19th century that drove his grandfather to get on that ship to Ellis 